the the tool that I'm going to be showing you is really about that collective impact approach and supporting that. And it's started as, um, you know, a request from the Midland Alliance. We need, we need to understand who it is that's in our community working in the homelessness sector. And we want to know how they connect to one another. And over time it evolved to being, okay, we actually want to know what services there are, not just the players on the ground, but what are the actual services that they offer? So I did a little bit of research and from our, well, from my perspective and the Zero Project's perspective, really what we want to be making sure is that whatever gets developed is really useful on a number of scales. So we want it to be able to facilitate the more strategic work, looking at you know, what's happening as a sector overall, and how we can improve that over time and ways that we can you know, manage our limited resources more effectively, but also practical for people who are on the ground working with people face-to-face -face every day and how we can actually support their work to be more efficient as well and to help them to connect more effectively with um, people who are out there who might be able to provide some of the other um, things that a client might need because we know we don't all have the, the answer on our own we need to work together so I've discovered this tool called Kumu that is open source software it's actually deceptively easy to create so um, as Lynn mentioned I delivered training to imagine futures on how to use it and develop it as well and it's free it is always going to be free, so there's no cost to um, use this map or to create maps going forward as well. So why did we begin in Midland? I'm going to give a little bit of a snapshot as to why, even though Zero Project is across the Perth area, why we've zoomed in to do some extra work in Midland and to support them. So for some reason, I cannot make that top tab. Forgive me. So I've been going out and having conversations in Midland for a little while now and meeting with Midland Alliance. And the last meeting that we had, which is what John was asking me to share, we, um, we actually set some short-term, medium-term, and long-term aims. And it's important to sort of understand what those are and, and why they are those particular aims, because it helps to understand why um, we're, we're out there in the first place. So we set some SMART goals that in the short term, we wanna just make sure that we've got quality data. So people with our VI SPDATs completed, so we know what their needs are and we can be more effective in actually um, directing them to the right services and advocating for the right services to be in Midland. And also for the medium term, the community out there set the aim to reduce the number of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people experiencing rough sleeping by 50% by 2024. And that was not just to reduce it, but to make sure that there's no return to homelessness after those people have been placed in housing. So the the second half, the crucial part of that aim is that wherever they are housed is sustainable, it's culturally secure, and they have that ongoing support. So a housing first approach. And then longer term is to expand that out to more broadly address rough sleeping. But the reason why um, the focus of Zero Project going out there in the first place is that Midland is a little bit different. So you may already be aware from the census done in 2016 that across Perth, Greater Perth region, the Greater Perth area, Aboriginal people represent about 2% of the population. In Midland, it actually increases to 5%. So there are a lot of Abor Aboriginal people who live in Midland and they are also massively overrepresented in the homelessness population. So 62% of people on our by name list um, who are experiencing homelessness in Midland are Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander. 80% of the people rough sleeping in Midland who are on our by name list are Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander. So what that means when you actually bring it into perspective in terms of representation as 5% of the 
the community population overall, that means that if you're an Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander person living in Midland, you're 1,240% more likely to be experiencing homelessness than a non-Indigenous person and you are 1,600% more likely to be experiencing rough sleeping than a non-Indigenous person. So that's why we're in Midland and that's why we're talking to the Midland Alliance and to Indigo Junction out there because there are some very specific needs that they have and um, a vulnerable cohort that we want to support. So that's why we've been out there and that's how this conversation around what resources do we have, where do we need to go actually began. It started also as a desktop research study. So it actually is not all of the services that are out there are necessarily on there, just the ones who had an online presence. And I was asked to approach it from a, we've got a lot of um, turnover in our sector at the moment. So if someone new to the sector is coming into employment, what would they likely find they could refer a client to if they had the time to research it thoroughly? So it started with that approach and over time it's going to build. It's already started to build with referrals from people who I've presented to who are saying, actually, we are a new service. Can you please make sure we're added? We connect to these various people. It aims to support the practical workers. It aims to support strategic work. So I'm going to show you now, um, you know, end the suspense and actually show you through the tool and how it um, addresses those different aspects. And that you can access it a couple of different ways. So I will put these links into the chat so you can go directly to Kumu or you can go through, navigate through our website. Okay, so if you go to our website and click on tools, it will take you to a link and there's going to be more things being developed. So I'll just show you, it shows up as a tab that you can click on because I'm in the progress, process of developing more tools. Click on that and it will take you to a summary that I've gone through already um, and a little snapshot of what it looks like there. But you want to navigate to the full map to get a nice, easy to use experience. Okay, so I'm going to take you through, first of all, the strategic side of it and what's been done to facilitate that strategic work in this software, as well as then how it gets used on the ground. So first of all, at the bottom of the screen, you'll see that there are these tabs and you'll also see the legend is color-coded. So because it started with Midland and Perth, uh, sorry, it started with Midland, Midland is in blue. Then I um, expanded it out to be, okay, well, how does Midland connect to other services that might be more broadly in the, um, connected to Perth? Those services are in yellow. The services that are specifically located in the Perth area are in green. Ones that operate across Perth and Swan districts are in orange. And ones that are just focused on the Swan district are in red. So that's what all those colours mean. And then also they're divided up by shapes. And those shapes are related to the service type. So I've gone and done a audit, I guess you could say, of housing, homelessness services, outreach services, wraparound support services, volunteer services, advocacy, healthcare, government and crisis. So it's quite comprehensive. If you think I've missed anything, please do let me know. Send me an email and um, it'll keep getting um, expanded and made more user-friendly. So to actually get a sense of what advocacy services are available, for example, you can click on the top and it will show you how they fit within this bigger picture. At the center of the map are ones that have a highly connected services and around the outside are services that don't indicate at least online that they're connected to any other services, either through partnerships or direct referrals. What you might be more interested in though is to actually see how services connect to one another and actually just zone right, zoom right in because you're wanting to actually 
have a conversation about how particular services are working together or how referrals could be improved. So, for example, this is advocacy, but maybe you're more interested in housing and homelessness, how it connects to outreach services, and then how it can connect to wraparound support services, what's already happening, but also the ones that are sort of floating around the outside and you might want to link more effectively in to either your particular area of the sector or um, to a service that you are responsible for. And you can keep layering that up to see how volunteers can are linked in, how you might want to connect, particularly during COVID, to healthcare providers and so on. So there's that option along the bottom of the screen that allows you to really tailor it to your needs. But I've also gone and based on conversations with people at Midland Alliance and also now more broader conversations I've been having with people, I've been developing maps by filtering for specific needs. So, for example, if you work in the youth sector, you're only really interested in what services are available for youth. So I've created a, specify, a specific map for young people. If you work with adults, then you don't want to know about what youth services there are. So you can see already there's a lot more um, adult services than youth services that are providing information online at least, and so on and so forth. So the ones that are in development at the moment are for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander specific services, cold services, and LGBTQIA um, positive services, ones that um, say very clearly that they are um, a service that is intentionally creating safe space for those groups. So that's what's in the works at the moment for the strategic supports, but also you can see how that would be really useful, I hope, to people on the ground. And coming back to young people, if you're a worker on the ground, you can filter. I only work in the youth sector. I only work with young people. So I only need this map filter. Then you can zoom right in. And as a worker on the ground, once you've looked around it and seen which services are relevant, Let's say you're interested in indie living, you can click on it once to get a summary. Maybe you've never heard of them before. You're not really sure if they're what you're looking for. You can get a summary of them. And if they're the right thing, you can double click on the colored icon and it will take you directly to that services webpage. So you can have a bit more of a read and you can get in touch with them that way. So that's um, where things are at at the moment and how they've been evolving over time. And there are other ways that you can also filter it further if you're interested. So if you've clicked on Indie Living and you want to see how Indie Living specifically connects, there's a little focus button, which I hope you can see has popped up down the bottom when I hover over it. And if you click on that, you can see who is directly linked, who does referrals to Indie Living, what's the process of actually getting someone referred there. Who directly links? Okay, now we're getting closer. We can see that the Midlands Alliance is connected. Indie Living, Indie House and the Zero Project all have a close-knit relationship at the moment. And then back to just Indie House. So there's a number of ways to use it. It's very easy for me to create extra map filters. So if there's things that you're interested in, I encourage you just to have a play um, and let me know what you think. If there's stuff that should be added, and if there are other map filters that you would like, it is growing over time. So um, as I've been going out and sharing this map with people in the sector, um, I know that there is already a whole range of spreadsheets and things that have been compiled by services. So people have been sending those through to me and I've been um, cross-checking what I do have and don't have and just been expanding it out and out and out. So um, yeah, the work's ongoing and I hope that you find it useful and helpful well into the future. Um, what's coming up next is that you can also, sorry, I'll just navigate back to the presentation. So you've got my contact details. So at the moment, I'm in the process of doing mapping for the regional areas that Zero Project is funded to work in. So that's Geraldton, um, Rockingham, Mandra, and Bunbury. 
You can also email me directly with any additions, like I just mentioned, that's been happening for a little while now. Um, if you also want me to add some of those filtered maps, like I was mentioning and demonstrating, I am happy to do them. Just email me with your suggestions. And also I'm available to do training. So um, like I did for Imagined Futures, um, it's deceptively simple behind the background. So if you have someone on your team who is interested in learning how and they're comfortable using Excel, um, I'm happy to provide that training like I did for Imagined Futures because obviously Zero Project is only funded to work in specific locations. And if you've got something that you're really wanting to do that's targeted for somewhere else and for a specific purpose and you don't think it would fit within that bigger map, let me know and I can upskill on just how easy it is to actually create one of these maps. Open source software, no cost to do. And um, if there's anything that you can share back to the Zero Project to make our map better, that would also be appreciated since we're all about collective impact. So thank you so much for your